for no Nova Scotia educators. Um, in terms of our, our agenda, we're going to uh, look at where you can find the curriculum links. So just going to our health center and going through one of the module guides in a little bit more detail. Um, we're going to look at two other examples of types of media that are available in Ocean School. Uh, we'll have some time for questions and answers as we go through that part. Uh, in the second part, we have two special guests with us today. Uh, Jeremy Sam Samson from Nova Scotia. He's teaching the new curriculum uh, in grade seven science and he's been with Ocean School now for just over a year, no, more than a year, um, helping us out on various parts uh, throughout the development. And so we're really happy that um, he's able to join us today and talk about how he's using Ocean School in his classroom today. And we also have uh, Giannetti George. Uh, she is an educator in St. Lucia. And she came to a, a workshop that we did in Costa Rica um, this fall, actually. And and Giannetti, um, she's been an educator for 26 years and her passion really lies in the areas of science education. And she's the curriculum officer for the natural sciences in the Ministry of Education. And she's gonna talk about um, how she um, explored Ocean School um, with some students and uh, did a curriculum scan. Uh, so just giving you another uh, perspective of how to use Ocean School in schools. Um, then we will. Uh, also here from Christine Christensen, uh, she works for the Ministry of Education and Early Childhood Development and she's going to share some of her perspective on um, curriculum links uh, for Nova Scotia. Finally, we're going to end with um, the inquiry tools uh, and how they can be used and we'll be joined with, by another guest, um, Brian Mazar, who's also worked with us uh, for quite a long time, well both Christine and Brian have worked with us for quite a long time on Ocean School. Uh, so we're really happy to have them with us today uh, to help um, provide more information and also take uh, help help us describe how all these things can be used uh, in Nova Scotia. And then we'll have a final question and answer and closing. Okay, uh, if you have a question, um, one of our team members, Emily, Emily Sheepy is one of our fabulous education producers. Uh, she's manning the chat. Uh, for you to uh, for you today, and so um, she will um, monitor the questions. And when we have question and answers, she'll be posting them so that uh, we can answer them for you. And of course, Jacques, our executive producer, he's also with us today. Uh, he's silent right now, but he will definitely be joining us now and then. And you will hear uh, him in some of our videos. Uh, he's done all of our narration and screen captures today. Uh, okay, so we're going to start by um, talking about where you can find some curriculum links. Uh, we've made a short little video that takes you on a tour through our module guides. So I'm going to play that video for you. Uh, how do I do that up here? <laughs> We wanted to give you a tour of the module guides that you'll find in the Help Center. These are a great source of information when you are planning to use Ocean School in your classroom. In this video, we will highlight the features each module guide has, so you can find the right information fast. Since each module is guided by an overarching question, this is the first thing you see on the page. In this case, what actions can you take to protect ecosystems? This is followed by a short description of the module and the trailer. The trailer is the first thing your students will watch when they start the module on the platform. We've placed it here so you can easily access an overview of the content. The potential topics and big ideas are also listed so that you can quickly find curriculum links. These are not exhaustive, but provide a starting point for teachers looking to make connections to their curriculum. We also provide an overview of the top three competencies this module targets with its media and activities. Importantly, the module guides provide a high-level overview of the lines of inquiry and media with direct links in this slideshow. You can see the overarching question, focus questions, and titles of the media. 
This shows you how the content is organized on the platform. Just a quick reminder that this map shows you where to find the content in the water cube. Keep scrolling to read more detailed descriptions of the media and activities provided later in this module guide. Note that you have to be logged into the platform to access the media with the links on this slide. Next, the module guide provides you with the details of the take action. The take action is the culminating activity of every module. Learners are asked to reflect about what they've learned and how they can put their learning into action. This activity is designed to support sustained inquiry, leadership, and collaboration. The take action is framed with a call to action from the youth host who poses the overarching module question and asks students to take action to answer it. In this case, what actions can we take to protect our ecosystems? We have embedded here the call to action that your students will find on the platform so that you can easily review it in advance. Finally, we detail each line of inquiry in tables. These tables provide you with lots of information about the media content and activities. You can see the title of the media, the type of media it is, the description of the content, and a description of the activity that follows with an estimated time. Again, the direct links to the media are provided. Remember to log into the platform first. Okay, so I'm just going to put back up our slides. <clears throat> Uh, so that's where you can find the curriculum links. Um, we will, um, once this webinar is over, we will share an email with um, the recording of this webinar as well as links to the Help Center. The Help Center is really a great place. Um, you know, the module guys is just one part of it, uh, but it, the module guys are really the the first place that you can go to find out um, what is in what are we covering. Um, you know, in those lists of topics and big themes, um, it's, oh, I don't know how my camera on. <laughs> um, it's not um, an exhaustive list. Um, many of you last time, um, or some of you asked about uh, climate change. Do we cover climate change uh, in the North Atlantic unit um, of Ocean School? Because some of you are teaching uh, grade eight and the climate change is, um, is a part of that. Um, and though we don't explicitly go into a lot of detail about climate change, definitely there are links that you can make to climate change uh, in our content. So I'm just going to briefly outline um, what some of those are. Uh, so in evolving ecosystems, um, we, we do talk about the distribution of cocoa pods, um, sort of the main food of the North Atlantic and how that's changed and how that's therefore impacting the right whales. Um, and so there are actually some videos, but uh, there's actually, I think there's two that really talk about, um, you know, how the movement of this food is changing also the patterns of the right whale. So there's a, there's a link there that you can make to climate change. Um, in protecting populations, we're really looking at, um, you know, sustainable versus unsustainable fishing in Newfoundland. And uh, one of the uh, things that we've been working really hard on is uh, an interactive um, experience around um, seafood and food and where it comes from. And so one of the um, activities that follows that is students investigating where their food comes from. So there's some links to climate change there in terms of making sustainable choices uh, for our food to reduce our footprint. Uh, in healthy habitats, um, Ocean School joins um, scientists and we're looking at, you know, specific habitats, we're monitoring species in those habitats. Um, again, we don't make really explicit links to climate change, but you can have discussions around how climate change will impact habitats that are very sensitive. Um, so I think that there are lots of ways that you can still draw in climate change, though we don't explicitly cover it in a lot of detail. Uh, at this point, I'm going to open it up to questions, uh, just to make sure that we're on track, that we see what you guys are wondering about.
so I don't see anyone typing, so I'm going to keep going, but I'll have Emily, she, she'll keep monitoring in case um, any questions do come up. Um, mm -mm -mm. So we are going to start moving on to um, some of our guests. Um, so looking at how other educators are using Ocean School in the classroom. Um, after Jeremy uh, speaks, um, we will actually open it up to questions before moving on to Gianetti. Uh, so if you do have questions, note that, you know, you will have time um, once Jeremy is done sharing. Uh, so I am going to turn on Jeremy's mic. Hello, Jeremy. Welcome. Are you there? Yeah, it just mutes it every time that you turn me off. So okay. oh, how's it going? <laughs> Good, good. So we're really looking forward to uh, hearing more about how you're using Ocean School in your class right now. And if you want to give a little bit of background about um, how you got involved with Ocean School, you can do that as well. Uh, all right, sure. Um, uh, my name's Jeremy Sampson, obviously, and I teach in St. Peter's in uh, And I happen to teach uh, Science 7 and uh, junior high math and junior high tech ed. So uh, I find the science seven curriculum that I'm doing really matches up with the ocean school. Uh, how I got involved with ocean school, it kind of dates back a little bit, but last year I was able to uh, be a part of uh, actually creating uh, the pilot curriculum for science and technology. Uh, during that time, uh, through some discussions and some meetings and uh, whatnot. Uh, Ocean School was something that popped up. Uh, and over time, it actually started uh, rolling into something that uh, I found was actually going to be of use in the classroom, especially with the, the new outcomes that we had created uh, as a group uh, during our pilot time. So. Uh, I thought I would dive into it a little bit more and a couple of opportunities popped up and I was able to contribute to the Ocean School a little bit uh, through that time. So uh, that's where I'm at uh, with the Ocean School and how it came about. And uh, over the last, uh, I guess, month or so, I've introduced it uh, to my Science 7 students uh, within the classroom. Um, going through uh, the new pilot really has quite a few spots where it can be graded. Uh, really throughout the whole environmental action uh, section, there's four different outcomes. And you can probably find something in Ocean School to match up with each and every one of these outcomes. Uh, so just to list off the outcomes, I guess, uh, the four outcomes are learners will analyze particle theory in relation to substances in the environment. So, uh, there is a little bit about runoff and oyster farms and how, uh, that can contribute, uh, to, uh, just, uh, so one of the things, uh, analyze health and local waterways. So uh, how does farming affect the local waterways? Um, if you go on, oh, Jeremy, I'm just going to in uh, interrupt you just for a second. Can you sure. just ba back off a little bit from your mic? It's just forgetting it. It's a little bit um, crackly. Okay, sure. Oh, that's much is, better. That's it, way better. Is it too loud or that's no, that's, fine, per right? that's perfect right there. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other outcome is learners will analyze the interconnectedness of living things in the environment in relation to the concept of nadugalum. Uh, nadugalum is actually embedded into the ocean school as uh, one of its sections, uh, which has to do with how uh, the Mi'kmaq culture incorporates uh, sustainability in their methods. And uh, it's just a neat way to kind of connect those two if it's something you're not comfortable with dealing with. Um, so here we could talk about uh, different habitats, talk about the right whales that were there, 
uh, and how we might study the underwater habitats and what's changing. Um, so again, whether it's food webs or uh, the interconnectedness of things, it, it kind of matches up really good with this one as well. Uh, also in this section, there is uh, learners will implement an environmental stewardship plan. Uh, so after each, I guess, section in the ocean school, uh, there is a take action plan, and this take action plan could relate directly to this outcome here. Um, students, uh, really, we want them to get involved with the community, and, and that's what Ocean School speaks to. So uh, as a plan, and whether it's raising money for, I know we looked at raising money to use wooden utensils in local, local restaurants instead of plastic ones. Uh, we looked at getting plastic bottles for the school and having refill stations that they could do so that the students are coming up with a bunch of ideas, whether it's in there's a greenhouse that they use to raise some of these funds uh, and so on and so forth. So this is stuff that they really enjoy and where they really get hands on and within the community. Great, Jeremy, that sounds awesome. I mean, I'm super excited to hear that some of uh, the work that you've been doing is, is leading you know, into the, this idea of stewardship and taking action. Um, I'm wondering if anybody out there has any questions for Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. It's uh, it's Jacques. I'm curious to know if uh, if you've gotten to the point where your students are working on take actions, and if they are, uh, do you have examples of what they've decided to do? Uh, so currently, part of their take action is uh, there is a kind of a community garden next door. For everyone, but it's part of the seniors complex. So uh, something they're doing is getting all that ready, and they're doing the seating for that uh, at the moment. Um, we also have one at the school here, and again, one of the students are looking to do little starter plants to try and raise money, uh, and they will be I don't, uh, they will be speaking to the local restaurants about about getting those. Uh, wooden utensils as opposed to the plastic ones because uh, that was something that uh, they found a, a large concern is the, the plastic bags and the plastic utensils and plastic straws that uh, many of the local local businesses are using and they want to try and do something to alleviate that. That's great. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, there was a question from Christine and uh, and Brian, wondering how your students are responding to Ocean School. Uh, right now, they're enjoying it quite a bit because uh, they've they're they're really into the new technologies. Um, uh, it's what really pulls them in, but at the same time. Uh, they're doing this inquiry and they're doing this learning themselves and they're coming up like I had nothing to do with any of these ideas. These are all things that uh, they wanted to take part of and they wanted to make a difference in. Uh, so really I find it's given them through all this, it's given them a voice and, and they're getting the confidence to actually get some stuff done. Oh, that's really great to hear, Jeremy. Um, and I'm, you know, we're always happy to to hear how educators are are using Ocean School and whether uh, students are ready, um, ready, how students are responding. Um, I think uh, we're going to move on to Giannetti now. Um, so we're actually, uh, she's prepared a short uh, slideshow for us. So we're going to turn off Jeremy's uh, mic. Thanks so much, Jeremy, for joining us today. And you're, uh, we hope that you stay because <laughs> maybe uh, some questions will will come up as we go. And um, so I'm just going to, how do I do this now? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. 
I'm like, could you put up the slides for me while I put um, Janity's mic on? Welcome, Janity. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> okay, great. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Okay, so if we look at our next slide. So I'm from St. Lucia. And where in the world is St. Lucia? St. Lucia is a small island in the Caribbean. You'll see it is south of you. And um, we have on our left the Atlantic Ocean. Well, the Caribbean Sea is on our left, and the, Car and the, the Caribbean Sea is, is to our left, and the Atlantic Ocean is to our right. So clearly you can see that we are surrounded by ocean. So there is no doubt that the ocean is a significant part of our lives. And not just for livelihood and for industry, but also part of our recreational activities. Now, having said this, you would think that ocean literacy is a big thing for us, but the truth is it is not. We do very little research in our region, in the Caribbean region, uh, in the area of ocean research. And even more importantly, the whole concept of ocean literacy is not a significant part of our curriculum. So for us, it was a great opportunity um, to be invited and to participate in Ocean School because it provides us with the ideal medium to develop ocean literacy in our students and by extension, our society. And if you look at this slide here, the picture here shows um, some of the girls, actually, we had a class full of girls who were participating in this trial of the Ocean School in St. Lucia. Okay, next slide. So we, we had this trial at the Mikud Secondary School, which is your version of a high school. We had students who were in grade 10, or what we call Form 4. Um, they were in the age group 15 to 16. Now, I did this as sort of a workshop type approach. Uh, so we did not get the opportunity to integrate Ocean School into the curriculum. But we felt that it was important for us to use this approach because Ocean School is new to us and wanted to see how it could work in our context. The next slide. So we decided on using the approach of a workshop and we did that in order for us to one, well, to have a trial of Ocean School with our local students and to determine what kind of receptiveness and what the reception would be to, to Ocean School. And I'm happy to report that all of the students, all of the participa participants, and we had 18 of them, one boy and 17 girls, and they were all very enthusiastic about Ocean School. They were really, um, engaging the activities. They were very interested in the use of the technology and how they could use this technology in such an informative manner. Um, also, we felt it was important for us to do this workshop in order for us to um, identify what are some of the competencies that are required in order for the students to be fully engaged in Ocean School. Also, we wanted to know if there were any prerequisites that the students must have in order for them to engage with Ocean School. So if those things were lacking, then we would know what areas that we needed to um, build upon. Also to, for me, having been the only person from my country who was trained in, in ocean school, I knew that the onus was on me to go back and share this knowledge with other educators. But I wanted to ensure that I was myself very familiar with the content because this is very important. You cannot incorporate Ocean School or any program to your students or fellow colleagues if you are not familiar with the content. So it's very important that all of the educators engage with the content and become familiar with Ocean School. Also, I wanted to be able to strengthen my ability to be a trainer of trainers. So that was another reason why we felt that going this way, the workshop approach with the students would have been beneficial. Okay. If you look at the next slide. In examining Ocean Schools, or even before we can use Ocean School as an, instru as an instructional tool. Now we recognize that Ocean School is a valuable instructional tool. 
But before we can do this, we have to look at the interrelatedness that exists. When we first look at our learning outcomes, we look at our assessment framework, and we look at Ocean School and see how they relate in order for us to ensure that we can integrate and we can achieve alignment. So this triangle really just shows how those three main concepts um, are aligned or connected with each other, okay? So even in looking at, say, the curriculum for Nova Scotia, I look at the Science 7, I guess that's a grade 7, and I realized, well, definitely it would be easy to incorporate it into the curriculum. And Jeremy spoke a bit about it before in terms of how he was able to do that. And I'm saying it, it, it seemed that it was easy, and I would like to um, support that, that it is very easy to do. Um, for, for instance, there is an example where you have one of your guiding questions is, how can, how can health of an environment be determined? And the indicator that was listed was measure the indicators of health of a local waterway with probe wear. Now, I was thinking that, hey, this is a great example of how we can use perhaps health, um, healthy habitats from the Ocean School, one of the modules. We look at life in the balance. And we can use the Baywatch video where we look at what factors are essential for health of marine habitat and right there the students can get an, an opportunity to engage with a simulation that will give them the opportunity to control the different variables maybe the the abiotic factors that are important in a you know water and in an aquatic environment okay so this is just one example of how the link can be made between the your curriculum and Ocean School. Okay, we can go to the next slide. In our context now, in the Caribbean, we use something called the CSEC curriculum. And so it was easy for us to see the alignment between our curriculum with the movement of species guide that is provided from Ocean School. And one of our sections entitled Living Organisms and the Environment, we're able to see how some of these big pictures or these topics are related to our own curriculum. So we saw the connection. When we look at biological diversity, ecological interdependence and adaptation, human impact on the ecosystem, global context for of, conserv of conservation, data collection, analysis, and so forth. We could see that all of those topics related directly with our own curriculum. So it was very easy to align the Ocean School with our taught curriculum. Uh, Junetti, I'm just gonna uh, interrupt you for one second there, um, just to um, bring some of our Nova Scotia educators up to speed. Um, movement of species is um, actually been retitled as marine migration, and this is going to be a module that um, is released uh, during the, the summer. Um, and Giannetti was part of a pilot, um, and so uh, she's had access to some of that material, which is why she's uh, aligning, making curriculum alignment with uh, movement of species. Uh, so you will be able to see that, and um, well, very soon, <laughs> uh, but just so that you guys know where she's coming from uh, right now. So, sorry, Giannetti, I just wanted to clarify for everyone because um, they may not know about movement of species yet. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Heather, for that. I did not realize that. Thank you for that. Yes, so these are some of the connections that we're able to make. We can look at the next slide. All right, very good. So, um, just delving a little deeper into this um, module here on healthy habitat. If we look at just one of the videos or sections, a sub module, we looked at life in the balance and we looked at during, we looked at this during our workshop. Here, one of the essential questions was what are the relationships between marine species and their habitats? And we were able to see how it aligned with our own curriculum. So looking at our section A again, living organisms and the environment, we are able to see which learning outcomes best align or corresponded with Ocean School. And we found two of them very easily, where we have the students assess the special relationships among organisms and also discuss the factors that 
affect the growth and survival of population, including human population. So we're looking at also the aquatic populations, plants and animals, and so forth. Okay, next slide. One of the exciting activities that we did was where we looked at um, this dialogue that takes place between the eelgrass and the sea lettuce, or the ulva. And <laughs> the students were quite captivated with that activity because they did it in pairs where each student took on the role of one of the organisms and they actually created the dialogue. And they didn't just write it out. I actually asked them to sort of create a skit between <laughs> themselves. They had fun with that. We actually made some videos. So they were able to now use the information from the videos and some of the notes from Ocean School in order for them to come up with the dialogue. Now, the students had never heard of sea lettuce before engaging with Ocean School. And they had never heard of eelgrass either. But having come, having had this opportunity to engage, they were actually very curious. They were doing research. I could see them Googling. I thought they were just fooling around, but they were not. They were actually curious as to what these plant organisms were. And some of them even did additional research in order for them to complete their dialogues. And I was very proud of them for that. Now, I recognize that Ocean School, while there was a very um, clear connection between Ocean School and the science curriculum, I realized that Ocean School actually provides an opportunity for integration across the curriculum. You can integrate with other subject areas as well. You can make the integration with language arts because when you look at different types of writing, so you can look at narrative writing, for instance, as, as you can do with this dialogue. We can use it for, well, we have a topic that we call social studies, where we look at um, managing natural resources and so forth. Ocean School can fit very nicely there. So it is totally possible to use Ocean School as a tool that can allow for integration across the curriculum. Let's start the next slide. And of course, St. Lucia is nothing like the North Atlantic. But even with those differences in geography, we found that some of the environmental issues are the same. So while in the Prince Edward Island habitat, there is an issue with the overload of the sea lettuce, we also have our own issues, which is similar, which correspond. We have a problem with the sargassum seaweed. We have a sargassum seaweed infestation. And we can see the impact of this seaweed on our own industry. It affects not just the fishing industry, and it doesn't just affect the fishermen and uh, the nursery for the juvenile fish and other marine organisms, but we also find that it, uh, it affects our tourism industry, which is a, well, the mainstay of the Caribbean. This is one of our largest income earner. And so our students were able to extend the topic of the relationship between the eelgrass and the sea lettuce for our own concept and have discussions about the impact of the sargassum seaweed. So we are saying that Ocean School is such a wonderful tool. And although we may not have the same um, species, the situations and the issues are the same. And because of that, we can extend and it was possible for us to effectively use Ocean School in St. Lucia. Okay. And our final slide here, this is a picture of one of the days when we were taking action. One of the plans that the students came up with was the idea of having a kind of beach um, cleanup campaign. So we did a mini <laughs> um, cleanup campaign. You can see our hall of trash right there in front of us, which we, we were able to um, audit the waste to, to determine the different types of waste that was collected. We also looked at the human activities that are taking place on the beach and how they can negatively affect the, the environment. And so although the workshop was like a, a crash course in ocean school, the students, based on the findings of the post-evaluation, I would have to say that there was 100% satisfaction. The students were quite happy. They all indicated that they would recommend Ocean Schools to their friends and colleagues, and that we should definitely incorporate Ocean School into the curriculum. Thank you.
Oh, thank you so much for sharing all of that. I mean, you've done a lot of work this year on it. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if there's any questions out there from any of our participants. Um, Gina, will you be holding any PD sessions for your teachers this year? Um, I do not. On Ocean think, School? Okay. Well, the school year ends in July. So mm -hmm. for the rest of this year, I do not think that we'll be doing anything. But hopefully next school year, we might do something. Because right now, we already have our work plan for the rest of the year. And we actually have some teacher training um in the summer we have something called summer summer institute where we do professional development for teachers so hopefully for next summer we can have some um training for teachers okay great well thanks so much and uh if any questions come up um we'll turn your mic back on um uh, for now Thank you. Um, <laughs> i think we're gonna move on I always get confused about how I do all these things. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for, for preparing the PowerPoint and sharing everything with us. It was super informative. I'm now going to welcome uh, Christine Christensen. Christine has been working with Ocean School for quite a while now um, in uh, really helping us. Um, well, really from the start, Christine, I'm going to let you share a little bit about how, how you've been involved in Ocean School. <laughs> wow, okay, thanks, Heather. Um, well, I'm, I'm really, first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to Gianetti for sharing all of all of that, and also to you, Jeremy. It sounds like you're doing wonderful things in, in the classroom. I am most uh, sort of heartened or, or heartwarmed, if that's a, if that's a term, um, to see the action taking place and uh, sort of, um, you know, releasing that agency over to the, the kids and, and stewardship. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, I got involved in Ocean School about three years ago uh, when I first came here to the Department of Education Early Childhood Development. I see Stefan Duguay on the list of attendees there as well. So um, he used to be here as well. And, and we were both involved in sort of the early days of Ocean School. And, and really, we're really excited from the very beginning. Um, we noticed that the ocean is all all around us in Nova Scotia, and you know the the fact that the uh, we could use this the ocean as a a tool for sort of getting at many of the science curriculum outcomes um, in a way that's interesting and meaningful to students. That was that was really exciting. So we've seen the evolution of Ocean School, and are really really happy with. Um, what we're seeing today and are really, really happy with uh, what we're hearing from educators as well. Uh, that being said, we are always, and NFB is always interested in, in knowing, you know, how we can uh, make things more user friendly or, or make things better for you. So we're really uh, looking for that information too. Uh, Heather kind of said to me, why don't you chat about um, <laughs> curriculum links? And I, I really feel as though that's sort of been highlighted already. Um, just the idea that Ocean School has many different assets that can be used in many ways. They can be used as jumping off points to all kinds of things. Uh, I recall a, a focus group that we had here in Halifax, I think it was a year or so ago. And I don't know if it was you, Jeremy, who looked at a at an image of um, all kinds of birds on an island and said, well, maybe I'll just freeze it right there and you can do all kinds of sort of math uh, extensions just from that one image. So I guess the, the point is, is that uh, there are many, many connections that can be made in an interdisciplinary way as well as sort of direct connections that can be made to uh, the science curriculum. There have been a lot of folks talking about the the new pilot curriculum so far, and uh, you know it, uh, the Ocean School absolutely fits with our new pilot curriculum. But if you're a teacher using the um, the older curriculum or the current curriculum, um, there are absolutely many links for you. Also, um, when you're looking at, at the ecosystems and interactions in grade seven, or sort of the oceans and waterways in in uh, grade eight, and all kinds of other connections too, uh, listing them off would be 
<laughs> I don't want to say impossible, but very, but very challenging. And the point too, I think that I hope you're seeing uh, after listening to those two folks talk about it, is that Ocean School can take you in many, many different ways. You're probably not going to do it in the same way from year to year because the interests of the students in front of you will be um, perhaps different. And so you might go down, you know, one path with one group of students and, and then a very different path uh, with another group of students. Um, yeah. I, I <laughs> no, no, thanks, Christine. That's that's great. You know, so from you and I know that we've we've covered actually quite a bit today about the curriculum links um, but I think that is more to the point is that you know you can take these um, in so many different directions and I think that's a really good point um, that you know we haven't that well we, we've touched on a lot today and I, I hope that um, you know as educators do exploration school they share back with us all the different ways that they're using it and the kinds of activities that they're creating um, so thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you. And I think that's one of the reasons, too, why the um, the assets and the modules, the pieces are editable by uh, by teachers, too. So it really yes. can become flexible for what's going on um, sort of in, in, in each specific classroom. Yes, definitely. And yeah, we're not covering that um, in a lot of detail today. Uh, well, we're not covering it today. However, in our help center, there is a guide um, that tells you how you can customize activities. Um, and there will be a how to video there as well. Uh, so I'm going to turn off your mic, Christine. Brian, we're going to get to the inquiry tools shortly. I just realized that we skipped over a little part. We wanted to share um, with you guys today just um, two different types of media that we have. Um, we have many types of media in Ocean School. And I think um, at the beginning of this webinar series, we showed you some of the linear videos, some of the interactives. And today we wanted to show you um, a newsreel and a micro doc. And so again, we recorded a video just for ease of use or ease of sharing. Uh, so I'm going to turn that on, and um, then we'll after afterwards we'll talk a little bit more about the inquiry tools and um, invite Brian to speak. Today we're going to check out two different types of media and their activity. The first piece is what we call a newsreel. Let's check one out together about the right whale. We filmed this module about ecosystems and the right whale quite a while ago, and the newsreels help us keep the content more current. It can also help you with media literacy. You can see this newsreel has a video clip from the CBC, a radio clip, and two shortened news articles. Once the students are done the newsreel, they will find an activity that helps them reflect on what they have learned. In this activity, students are asked to identify what they think the most important finding or idea was and explain why. This type of media and activity links well with ELA concepts about audience, purpose, ideas, and communication forms, as well as the guiding questions in the Nova Scotia curriculum like how do the opinions of others shape my own thoughts and ideas? Why do we need to think critically about what we hear, read, and view? We also have what we call microdocs. These are brief web documentaries students can click through. This one is called Seed to Plate, and in it, our youth host, Isabel, visits a grocery store and tries to trace three pieces of fish back to the source. In the activity, the students are challenged to do their own investigation. Isabel provides a model for how you could do your own investigation using the OceanWise app, but you could challenge your students to evaluate other sources of information to use when they research the topic. You could analyze this piece from a media literacy perspective or discuss it as part of a lesson on environmental stewardship, sustainable use of our natural resources, as well as human impacts on the environment. This is a great way to get students thinking about their responsibilities as global citizens as well. How our consumption habits at home can affect ecosystems all around the world. Okay, so that's just a little, 
a little video just to show you two of other things. Um, some of the some of the news uh, articles and the newsreels um, can be a bit uh, long. Um, we would like to continue to try to adapt them um, to be a little bit um, e easier reads, um, but they are we do sometimes shorten them. Um, and I, I really do think that the newsreels are a good place um, to try. Uh, talking about you know media literacy and those things. So uh, and and the microdocs are also um, just another way of engaging with our media. Um, it's the 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 videos that we tend to have the linear videos are you know up to five minutes. But the microdocs are really short uh, videos and um, you know they're a little bit more interactive because you're swiping, you're moving through. Uh, so it's just to give you an idea of the you know Ocean School isn't just videos. Um, <laughs> we have uh, you know, 360, we have VR, we have the interactives, we have newsreels. So there's lots of different types of media um, in Ocean School. So we just wanted to um, highlight that a little bit more today. Um, so finally, we're going to talk about inquiry tools. Uh, so inquiry tools, uh, this idea came from educators, um, some of the focus groups that we did actually in Nova Scotia, uh, where we were talking about, you know, Okay, so we want students to do inquiry. How are we supporting building those skills? Um, and that's where the idea came uh, to start generating um, what we call inquiry tools. Uh, so these are animations, they're short videos as well. And they really target inquiry skills like how do we ask great questions? What is critical reflection? Um, how can we make a powerful observation? Um, each of these tools actually comes with a, a teacher guide, uh, so students can both do them on their own, or it could be a guided lesson uh, where you take things a little bit further. Um, I have to put back on the PowerPoint just for a moment to show you um, where you find these on the platform. So when you're in the platform and your students are looking at the water cube, every module has this red flag, and that's where you can find um, all of our inquiry tools. Um, and then within the help center, uh, you'll find all the guides for the module, uh, the module, uh, the module tools, the inquiry tools. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to play um, one of the first inquiry tools that we developed call, called um, putting the quest in questions. And it's all about how we generate great questions. And then we're going to bring on Brian to help uh, talk about how he used this uh, to, in, well, actually we're using Ocean School uh, in his classroom last year. So we'll start with the video. Questions, questions, questions. They're the key to finding stuff out. Some like, what time is it? Is it raining outside? What's for dessert? Have simple answers. Questions bring us information, but great questions generate answers that set off more questions, leading us through a whole new universe of knowledge. Take eating fish. You probably have an opinion on how it tastes, <laughs> but what else do you really know? Let's see what different types of questions can teach us. Question. Is eating fish healthy? Answer. Yes. Okay, so questions with simple yes or no answers give us some information, but they're pretty limited. Let's try again. Question. How do you prepare fish for eating? Answer. You can fry it, bake it, boil it. In fact, humans have been eating fish for thousands of years all over the world. Now we've got a bunch of new information. Good questions have more than one answer. Let's practice with some more good questions. How are fish caught? Why are some fish more valuable than others? Notice bigger questions often start with how or why. Good questions provoke answers that build on what you already know and prompt you to consider a whole bunch of different points and new evidence. Question. How can we eat fish without harming our oceans? And what choices can I make to help support sustainable fishing practices? Now that's a great question. Okay, so that gives you an idea of uh, what one of the little animations about an, um, about an increased skill is like. Uh, so I'm gonna turn on Brian's mic. 
Hello, Brian. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to tell us, maybe you could start with a little bit about how you got involved in Ocean School and uh, then get into the Inquiry Tool? Of course. Um, so I was uh, originally part of the grade seven and eight uh, writing team for science and technology education last year, along with Jeremy uh, and working with Chris um, and Stefan. Um, and uh, Ocean School uh, was something that we began exploring. And uh, last year when I was uh, back into the classroom after the curriculum renewal writing um, was complete, um, I had an opportunity to pilot um, the content at that time, so it was around April or May last year. Um, and so the students were engaged quite a bit uh, in that content, and uh, we were lucky enough to um, be able to provide uh, feedback and talk about the experiences that the students were having with uh, Ocean School. And then also this year, um, in my classroom, September till, till January, I was teaching social studies this year, but uh, used uh, the inquiry tools from Ocean School in order to start um, the idea of developing in this case you know good and great questions um, and so the like ocean school is going to provide you content which is going to be excellent but so the students will come into the classroom uh, at least my students this year came in with a wide variety of ability to ask questions um, and it's specifically to ask questions that would sustain inquiry you know some sometimes our questions were very direct and that was you know a a good place to start with them. Some questions were um, a little bit more complex, but the inquiry tool is something where you're starting at your class, you're talking about how to ask questions, and then you can review the video that was just shown, um, and then use that as an opportunity to instruct students how to take the questions that they're asking and you know betterify them or, or extend them into questions more about relationship. And then in doing so, you're able to use some of the other videos that come about in the Ocean School content and generate questions that the students, like they will generate those questions that they're most interested in. And after giving them that specific instruction on how to ask good versus great questions or the purpose for a question with a specific answer versus one that talks more about relationship pieces, you're able to set them up for success when it comes time for them to choose something that is motivating for them to learn about. So whether it's, you know, the the birds on the island, you know, that Chris had mentioned before, if, if that's something that really draws their attention, they're able to ask questions. And, you know, your job is is not to research all about birds on an island, but it's more about, you know, how can I help how can I help the student find that information? And that becomes my specific instruction piece. Or maybe you move on, you know, at an appropriate time to the next inquiry tool for, you know, cr critical reflection. You know, practice that with a mini lesson and opportunity, and then you're using the Ocean School content to do that you know in in actual student practice right so your mini lesson is there and then they're able to use that content to critically reflect it's really great for setting up dialogues with each other and talking about the relationship aspect of the ocean because we know that you know that it's such an integral part to all of our all of our lives not just our like ocean life um, but that the questions that they're asking will help to understand a little bit more of the com complex nature of of the interdependentness interdependentness of, of nature itself, right? And so that, that seemed to work really well for my students. It helped them to get, um, to progress, I would say, as, as independent learners. You know, originally when you're thinking about inquiry-based learning, you know, the vision comes to mind that you kind of, you give them, give them a computer and let them be free, but in reality, you, you'll require a lot more structure um, in order to give them the tools to actually get a gradual release of responsibility, not necessarily, you know, full release where they can look at whatever. You're using this as a tool um, with which to allow them opportunities to learn. So it worked really well uh, in my class. I structured a kind of mini lesson, and then we applied uh, working our way through Ocean School. I think the conversation after doing this, um, like I, I attempt, you know, we attempted to do this in May. And then tried it again, you know, after some personal reflection in uh, September, October with my social studies class. And it, it, it seemed like the results that we had in the conversations and discussions, even the motivations from the students, was more because now they were able to ask those questions that they were most motivated to do, still within, you know, my general outcome of whatever it happened to have been. Um, in this case, it was it was land use for social studies and our relationship to land. That That seemed to be, you know, really rewarding for them to explore and motivating for them to explore in their own way. And these inquiry tools help to give them the skills with which to do that. So overall, for me, it, it, it was great. And I you know, would 
head back to the classroom any day and um, give them another try just because it, it it was such a great opportunity to have, you know, a lesson plan there for me to kind of like work my way through. And then also the Ocean School content that you can apply that on. Um, it, it feels like a much more authentic uh, approach. So overall, I was, I'm thrilled and I highly recommend giving those inquiry tools a, a look at because they do help you help them. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, Brian. And that's a, that's a really good way of putting it. Um, and I think you're, um, you know, about structuring the inquiry, I think that's so important. Um, and uh, that's the whole purpose of, behind these inquiry tools is uh, to help teachers do that with their students. Does anyone have any questions for Brian? Or Jeanette, or Jeremy, or Christine? <laughs> um, So we are uh, we are coming to the end of our webinar. Um, I did see a question pop up um, about French. What was that question? Ha, where are we with the translation of the activities? Um, everything for North Atlantic is in English and French now. Uh, so all three modules, Healthy Habitats, Evolving Ecosystems, and Protecting Populations are available in French and English and all of the activities are in French and English. Um, for the Google Classroom integration, but you need to log in from the, in French. Is that right? Jacques? <laughs> oh, you cut out just for a little bit, so I did not hear what you said, sorry. Oh, sorry, I am just was saying that um, to get the activities in French, they need to log in in French, right, for the educator space? Correct, for, for right now. We're working on fixing that so it works in both languages, but right now you have, you have to log in in French to be able to make a class in French. OK. Are there any other questions out there before we wrap up? OK, well, <laughs> uh, we don't see anybody typing. Uh, so in terms of next steps, um, Emily is going to put up the feedback form for you to fill out. Um, we hope that you join our community. Uh, we are still working on perfecting uh, the flow of information on there. Um, but it is a space for you to share, to ask questions, to chat with one another about what you're doing. Uh, we hope that you'll be using Ocean School in your class. Um, we also hope that if you are using Ocean School and you're really excited about it and you want to share with others that you get in touch with us, um, we are looking for more Ocean School champions or super users to help us um, bring Ocean School to more educators. Uh, you can also send your questions to oceanschooltraining at gmail.com. Um, anything else i guess a huge thank you to everyone who joined us today to jeremy to gianetti to christine and brian um today wouldn't have been possible without your voices and the work that you put into it so thank you so much for joining us and yeah i guess that's it are there any um, there's the emily has put the link in the chat to the community of practice feedback form is now at the top there. You just have to click and uh, a form will open. We really hope that you give us some feedback so that we can continue to improve. We really do listen to you guys. Um, today came about because of a quick survey that we did uh, to see, to gauge where you guys were at, what you guys needed. Um, so we really do listen to the feedback um, and we hope that uh, today was helpful for you and we hope that you use Ocean School in your classroom. <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs>